Hey everyone! Welcome to my channel. My name is Vanessa and you are watching the Exploring Oracle or the Ex Oracle for short. Currently, I'm going through my entire deck collection, categorizing them, talking about the decks, deciding which ones to keep, rehome, or the ones that I'm unsure of. And today, we're going to take a look at my animal decks. I do have an entire playlist of all the other collection videos that I've done and if that's something that interests you, please check it out. So let's start off with the mass market deck. This is the Affirmator Starro. Um, it is, I, this deck is, uh, is really cute. So it has a tiny but succinct guidebook. So it has a, enough information for you to be able to, to do a reading, basically, if this is for your first deck, you know, if you're just drawn to the cute um, to the cute artwork, and it's a very approachable, very positive, very affirmatory deck. Um, uh, it is quite large, but uh, it comes in this linen cardstock that's very easy to shuffle, even though the cards are larger than standard tire size. So what I love about this deck is, of course, it is mostly animals, but they are all so happy they're so cute. I, you know, I don't read with this deck much anymore, but I just love keeping it. It's one of my earliest decks, so this has been with me for about three years now. And I still, I still really like it. Um, I also like that the suits are color-coded, so you have the ones, this orangey color, then um, cups or water suit to be this blue. The swords, look at this ace of swords, uh, are yellow and pentacles are green. So this is a really nice beginner deck. It's very approachable. It's very gentle. So it's not, um, it doesn't feel intimidating at all. So it's one of my first few decks and still one that I would want to keep uh, in my collection. So that is the Affirmator Staro. Let's move that to the side. Next, we have an indie deck. This is The Way of the Panda Tarot by Kim Chan. And this one is already the latest, uh, I forgot what it's called. It's the, um, not sure if what kind of edition, but this is the latest edition that basically has the spot gloss already on the backs of the cards. Now, I used to have the Baby Panda version, but when I got that, uh, one of the things that I did regret was not getting the full size. So when she reprinted, this is the, um, she reprinted this uh, full size version, I jumped at the chance because I really love these pandas. You know, uh, pandas are probably my spirit animal. We're both clumsy, we're both Asian. <laughs> Uh, it's just really, really adorable. Uh, but it is very RWS based, so you can read with this. It's very approachable as well. And just fun to use. And you know, sometimes for me, having tarot is just like appreciating the art or looking, you know, having fun with the, with the deck and not necessarily something that I use, um, for my spirituality or to deepen my spirituality. And I know it's, you know, some people do that for tarot and it's a great tool for that. But for me personally, it's just for me to get to know myself better. And sometimes these types of decks, the ones that I enjoy looking at or are very approachable, are the most effective for me. So this is what the guidebook looks like. So also some just some short information, but enough for you to get to get a reading and you have your extra cards here as well so and I, and you also have some spreads um i like how kim chan writes i think she's very creative i have probably almost all of her decks i don't think i have the lenormand but uh yeah and then she's coming out with a way of the panda oracle which i will definitely be getting or backing once it's on kickstarter uh this one is the hearts fun tarot this is an indie deck, and honestly, I haven't used this deck at all, but I have looked at it. And again, you know, sometimes I just get decks because 
I like looking at the art and I just and I was so drawn to the art in this deck. Um I don't know. I I feel like I actually enjoy more um animal decks compared to people decks. I like nature based decks. Uh, I like it when there's not a lot of people looking back at me when when I do my readings. I do like working with animal energy as well um, because I feel like there's so much to learn from them. So yeah, this deck is so cute. A lot of these decks that I have in this um, category are quite adorable. But yeah, it's um, it's one of the newest ones in my collection as well. I think I only got this this year 2024 and it doesn't really have a guidebook oops oh i have some of the cards here so oh i have to rearrange that then or are these extra cards i'm not too sure um but yeah it doesn't come with a guidebook but it does have this uh like fold out that has some of the meanings or keywords for each card so that is the heart spun tarot Okay, so moving along, uh, let's take a look at this one. This one is the Brady Tarot. So this is an indie deck. I wanted to show you. Look at the details on this box. Now this is also one of my favorite animal decks. Uh, it is bigger than standard tarot size. Gilded. The art style here is so unique um it's something that i was really drawn to the detail the energy is quite different i did a full flip through of this uh, deck and it actually has a lot of things that i don't usually like in decks for example the rose petal finish it does kind of stick if i don't use it for a long time um it's a bit oversized so it's harder for my small hands it's a bit dark but I, this deck is really special. I may not read with it often, and that is primarily because I mostly just read for myself, and I do have a lot of decks, but I know that this deck is safe in my collection. And yeah, this, this is really special. I also like the keywords. It's not distracting, and the art style is just, for me, really, really powerful and really, really pretty. At the same time the guidebook here is also well done this is by Rachel Pollock who is quite famous in the tarot world and yeah there's a lot more information here compared to the other decks uh, the other the previous decks but yes still easy enough or digestible enough for let's say a beginner to to pick up and use now, I know that some, most people say that you should use the RWS as your deck if you're just starting out. But to me, it's really, I think it should be a deck that costs to you and a deck that you would want to use and learn from. <laughs> because sometimes the imagery of the RWS is not appealing to everyone. But yeah, my, my camera or my phone is sliding, so I have to adjust it. But okay, so let's take a look at... This next, this is the uh, Naked Heart Tarot by Jillian Wilde. And this time, uh, the guidebook is also really good. What I like about it is, is it also has crystal recommendations, um, astrological associations. And you know me, I love crystals. So anything that has to do with crystals is something that I'm drawn to. It also comes with this like crystal grid. Um mat <laughs> inside the, the the box that i don't really use it but it does look like this so you can use it as like a grid or uh you can also use it when you lay down your cards but i just put it here at the bottom of my deck okay so the card stock here for this deck is a mat it's really a beautiful high quality mat um I, i'm sorry i wasn't mentioning it in the previous decks but all of the card stock has been quite good uh this is white mostly white space around and then you have the image here now this deck there's some cards in this deck that i don't necessarily 
like, but a lot of them I do enjoy. Um, I have tried rehoming this deck, to be honest, but I never was successful. And I feel that for decks like that, um, it usually means that I have some work to do or I still need to work with the deck. I, so that's why I think this is still a maybe. I'm not really sure if I'm going to keep it long term. But for now, definitely a keep. This is one of my favorite uh, Seven of Cups cards. <laughs> but yeah. So yeah, I, I don't know. The, you know, animal decks, I have quite a, a lot of them. But even though they're mostly animals, I feel like each deck has its own energy, has its own voice. And it's different reading. <laughs> reading with different decks. Uh, okay, so let's move on. So let's go through, I think, all tarot first because I, I've mostly shown tarot decks. Okay, so I adjusted my camera again. And this one is the Bohemian Animal Tarot. Uh, this is a mass market deck by Scott Alexander King, illustrated by Sharon McLeod. And I got this primarily for the book. Uh, I think it was in one of those tags, at best guidebooks or best tarot guidebooks. And this was highlighted in several of the VRs or in the videos for that tag and you know me I like a good guidebook so I got it I got it even though I am not particularly uh, fond of the art because it is the anthropomorphized animals and it's not something that I enjoy so I have not used this deck because I don't really like the art necessarily i mean it's I, it's pretty but it's just not my style so i don't like uh animal heads on people's bodies and all that so i don't read with this deck obviously uh, i don't i don't really resonate with the images here so i'm pretty sure that this will be rehomed but i have to go through this book first and I haven't yet. So this is one of those decks that I got primarily for the book. And something that I will be keeping for now, but will definitely rehome. But I, I just have to get through the book, uh, you know, get the insights from here before I rehome it. But I haven't used the cards because it's something that, that doesn't really appeal to me much. Now, uh, another mass market animal tarot deck that has supposedly a good guidebook or a great guidebook is the Animal Totem Tarot. So this one is by Lisa Robertson, another Llewellyn deck. And, I, you know, it's a chunky guidebook. So something that I also have to get through again. But I do appreciate the, uh, the amount of information that I can get. And anything that has like prompts, um, you know, I enjoy. And I also like that it actually goes through business and career, family and relationships, and health and well-being for each of the cards. So you get different perspectives depending on what you pull. Now, compared to the Bohemian Animal Tarot, I do love the art on this deck. It is colorful. And it's animals, you know, um, in their habitat. Uh, I, I love... I love the colors on this deck. I do like the art. It's in the Llewellyn glossy-ish cardstock, typical Llewellyn cardstock. So it's quite easy to use, very easy to shuffle, um, feels sturdy enough. And yeah, the, the colors on this deck shines for me. I'm not sure if you can see, but the saturation and the portrayal of the animals on this deck is something that I really enjoy. So this one, I will definitely be keeping as well. And, okay. Now let's take a look at two decks that are quite similar in terms of art style, but not completely. So let's go through this one first. This could be, if you've been reading tarot long or if you've been in tarot too long, I'm sure you would be familiar with this deck. Oops, this is the Wild Unknown Tarot by Kim Kranz. 
uh, I believe this deck actually revolutionized tarot decks uh, when it was first launched because it was in an art style or it depicted images that were quite different from the typical RWS and it rocked the tarot community when it was first released. Now, I, I'm not fond of this packaging. I don't like box-in-a-box -box kind of things. I keep saying that I'll be getting rid of the outer cover, but I haven't done it yet. But these are what the cards look like, and the art is amazing. Um, the line work that Kim Kranz did for, for this deck is just really appealing to me. And beautiful. I also love the cardstock. It's like um, a satiny, almost plasticky kind of cardstock. It shuffles so well. I really love the cardstock on this deck. And I actually want to get the pocket size version too, but uh, I wasn't too sure if the cardstock would be the same. And I'm really, I really like the cardstock on the on the full size. So this is what the cards look like. Really beautiful art. Uh, the guidebook. Yeah, I think I showed you the I showed you the guidebook already. But yeah, the guidebook has. Um, uh, like a paragraph for each card there's some keywords for each card as well i think it's enough information that you know you can you can start reading i'm not too fond of the font that's used it's really just me because i don't have the best eyesight so sometimes it gets difficult to read that's also another reason why i didn't get or i haven't gotten the pocket tarot yet um because you know for space considerations i was think i was thinking of rehoming the full size but you know, I might not be able to read the guidebook and I might not like the cardstock. And this one I really like. Uh, the other deck that has quite a similar style is the Sacred Web Tarot. So this deck actually has a story behind it. And I believe it's like a mother and son team. And the son was recovering in the hospital and while recovering from this um, this illness he created this deck so I haven't obviously I haven't used it yet <clears throat> the cardstock here uh, feels it it's okay um, it does feel like it will bend more or the more with use uh, the art style is a bit similar but I wouldn't really say that it's the same or it has the same energy or feel I also love the art here um, but to be quite frank, it is something that I don't necessarily need because I have a lot of decks in this category. The other thing that I don't really resonate with much with this deck are these like cosmic um, images that it, it takes me out of being grounded or feeling grounded, you know, when it comes to with, with animal decks. And sometimes it just feels um, confusing for me, you know, some some of the the art on this deck. So it feels the energy just feels somewhat confusing. And but that's just me. But the art is really beautiful. The guidebook is also uh, substantial. Mm. It's actually thicker <laughs> than than the uh, wild unknown there's a lot of information here and it's and it's uh, easier to read because it's typed out there have been some renamed cards though as well um so yeah th this one doesn't come easily to me um you know the uh it, it isn't easily understandable <laughs> um so i haven't really used it much i haven't really used it um i've just browsed through the guidebook and the art but i think this is a maybe um i haven't really given it a chance you know but it just doesn't seem like something that i would be keeping uh, long term in my collection okay so this one 
I believe this is out of print or going out of print. This is the El Goliath Tarot deck. And it comes with this really, really big detailed guidebook. It, um, it opens up this way. Uh, it, it, it is a little bit small. The text is a little bit small, so a little bit difficult for me to read. But um, I can manage, so it's not the worst. <laughs> so there's a lot of information here. And this deck I got because supposedly it was really good for shadow work. And, um, you know, when I first started collecting decks, it just felt like, you know, I had to have this deck for shadow work. I had to have this deck for so-and-so. But it isn't really the case. You know, you can read with anything. You can do shadow work with um, with any deck. But if you're called to this one, you know, if it's still available, go out and get it. Because the art style or the art is, again, unbelievable. It's like pencil art, I believe. But the details, the shadowing, the it's just amazing. So it's a black and white deck. It's bigger than standard tire size, but honestly, I don't use this deck for shadow work because I really don't do deep shadow work as much as uh, yeah, I, I I don't do deep shadow work, uh, and uh, sometimes these types of decks are too much. But I, I do love looking at the art. And that's also one of the reasons why I collect tarot because I love looking at the art. I love, um, I, I don't really have <laughs> much of an artistic skill. So I'm really quite amazed with people who can create things like this, you know, can draw things like this. It's just amazing to me. And also, again, animal energy. You can really work with the wisdom of the animals. Yeah, really stunning deck. Um, I know that uh, since this deck is going out of print, a lot of the decks right now that are available are about 40% off. So if there's still some copies and you, this goes out to you, do check it out. This is the El Goliath Tarot deck. And let me just put it back in the box, which is a little bit difficult. That's uh, my <laughs> minor complaint, but... Yeah, and, and it doesn't have any thumb cut out, so sometimes you have to let gravity do its thing so that it goes out of the box. Okay, so next, let's take a look at the Anima Mundi Tarot. Uh, so I do have a lot of animal tarots, <laughs> I just realized. Uh, but anyway, so this deck, I was absolutely... Um, drawn to the art style in this deck which is why i got it the guidebook is just a little guidebook but again it has enough information for you to to start uh i actually like the way it's written because it's like a story so that's uh what the guidebook looks like and this is what the art looks like oops this one feels it's not as I mean, the images are the actual animals, but the atmosphere that they're in is quite different. So it's not like an everyday scenery. It feels like it's in between worlds to me. And there's something about that that really draws me in to this artwork or to this deck. So I haven't really used this uh, for readings, but... Again, love looking at the art, love having it in my collection. So, oh, I haven't been saying whether I would, oh yeah. So the Elgolite I will be keeping, this one definitely I'll be keeping as well. This is also in a really beautiful linen cardstock. So one, my favorite cardstock. It is gilded, which I don't really mind <laughs> because it, it isn't a sharp type of gilding, but I would have preferred it to be matte, painted matte or something like that. But, but yeah. Another beautiful deck. This is the Anima Mundi Tarot. And let me just keep that. Let's set it aside. Oops. Okay. Alright, so now it's time to go 
through the last three decks, which are all oracles. We have the Prairie Majesty uh, by uh, Kara Simons. You have the Urban Crew Oracle by MJ Kulanin. And Message from Your Spirit Animal Guides by Stephen Farmer. So let's start with this one. This one, I believe is the oldest, probably the oldest deck uh, in this collection. I mean that from the time that it was published. Let's check. This one was published 2008. So I haven't even dreamt of using tarot at the time. But yeah, so this one is basically the, the animal and then a message from the animal. And I find that really interesting. Although the art style is not, uh, let's say, as cute <laughs> as the other decks that I have, it is something that draws my attention. And I like getting messages, you know, and some animals I'm not famil familiar with. Um, but yeah, you just get a message from the animal. And sometimes, you know, you can just, uh, that's something that <laughs> you can really use. Um, so yeah, I can use it as a daily pull, as a clarifier, and I'm, yeah, I think I'm keeping this. I, I'm, I'm not too sure because I don't use it a lot, but I think I will be keeping this. I think that I don't have decks that are in this art style in my collection, and um, I do enjoy the messages that I see. This one is the Urban Crow Oracle by MJ, and this one is definitely a keep. I love MJ's work. Um, I especially love the keywords on this deck. And I was really drawn to this Urban Crow Oracle, um, which made me buy the Crow Tarot. But the Crow Tarot, I have since rehomed. But this one, I still kept. And I'm actually interested in getting, I believe she has another deck, a Pocket Crow Oracle that has some ad ad additional cards. But the keywords here are really good. It's a good balance of... Um, uh, positive and negative keywords it's also i i love the art i love the emotions that the crows have <laughs> uh, i also like how she writes so i'm a fan of mj's so it's no surprise that i do want to keep this deck um i also have her for hapsataro um and yeah so i am interested in her pocket crow oracle and lastly, we have this deck, the Prairie Majesty Oracle. So this is the indie edition, but it has come out mass market already. And the story about this is I did rehome my uh, mass market edition, but missed it and eventually traded this deck from with, with another person um, in, a, in a tarot group that I was in. And this one, is great because it has a lot of prompts, good keywords. The illustrations um, are not as realistic as it would look like, um, you know, compared to the other decks, but it's still really, really recognizable. And I, I actually really like the illustration. I like the art. I like this deck a lot, to be honest. Um, I do love that I did keep or got the in the edition because the cardstock is much better compared to the Hay House um, mass market version. And yeah, definitely keeping it. I'm not going to let this go a second time around. And it really helps with the a journaling practice that um, that I'm, I'm, I'm working on. I'm hoping to improve, you know, these prompts. Really, really, really good deck. Okay, so that has been all of my, um, oh, I, I haven't shown you the guidebook, but this is what the guidebook looks like. Thumbnail, details, uh, yeah, so also a good guidebook, but yeah. Anyway, so usually how I end these decks, uh, how I end these collection videos is I pick my top three. Huh, and uh, hmm, let me think, <laughs> let me think for a second. Okay, so I have decided I am going for the Way of the Panda Tarot, the Prairie Majesty Oracle, and the Brady Tarot. Now, there's a lot of decks here that I want to keep, but I think these three, you know, if I only had to keep three, I think I would be happy with this choice. Um, yeah, these are my favorites out of the bunch, but definitely a lot 
on this category I, I would be keeping and enjoy working with. Anyway, that's it for this video. I hope you find it interesting. If you did, don't forget to click on the like button and do consider subscribing to my channel. See you again next time. Bye!